Hey y'all and welcome back to a new devotion, Turning Points with God by David Jeremiah. Today's title is The Power of a Plan. Um, our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2 and I will be reading that from my King James Bible and it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering, and gatherings in this text means collections, when I come. In the first century AD, persecution had driven the young Jerusalem church into hiding. Believers were ostracized by the Jewish community and could not buy or sell in the commercial markets. They were without food or money. The Apostle, mounted, the Apostle Paul mounted a fundraising campaign among the churches in Achaia and Macedonia. I probably said a, that a chia word wrong. I apologize. To raise money for the church in Jerusalem. Paul proposed a plan to the Corinthians. Every Lord's Day, Sunday, the believers would bring what funds they could and contribute them to a collection. When Paul arrived, the funds would be ready. There would be no panicky efforts to raise money. The plan worked. And Paul delivered relief funds to Jerusalem. That's a reference to Romans 15 verses 25 through 27. Whether we are giving time, talent, or treasure, a plan produces results. It is too easy for us to want to give, mean to give, and hope to give, and never get around to giving. A plan represents a commitment, a vow to the Lord, and gives us a track on which to run. If you're giving whether time, talent, or treasure, if your giving, whether time, talent, or treasure has been sporadic, prayfully consider committing to a plan. It won't be long before you'll never be without one again. Failing to plan is planning to fail. That is an unknown quote or a quote by someone unknown. Hmm. Well, I am the type of person that loves a a plan. I love to plan, uh, but I am not so uh, that if my plans change, it just totally disrupts my life. I'm not that bad, but I do kind of like to have a plan. And I can understand how beneficial planning can be. Um, and I understand that they're talking about, you know, money and all that kind of stuff. And what greater time for this devotion than the time we're in now, meaning all the devastation that has hit our part of the world. I mean, what we're seeing in the United States is stuff that you would normally see in war-torn countries. Um, and I, newsflash, did y'all know Wyoming's been on fire? Nobody's covered that. Wyoming has had thousands and thousands of acres burning while North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida has been just plummeted with horrific hurricanes. I was going to say life-threatening hurricanes, but I guess they're all hurricanes are kind of life-threatening, but there's been so there's been total devastation and Literally, places have been wiped off of the map from these hurricanes. And so, what better time in our lives than now to, you know, have a plan to help our fellow man, to help our country? Um, whether it be that you have the time that you can go to those areas Maybe you don't have the time, but you have the money that you can donate to the organizations that are doing the most good. And I would encourage you to really do your research on that um, to make sure that your money or your items that you're donating are actually 
reaching the ones that they are intended for, you know, and prayer. Prayer is a precious commodity. Um, if you don't have the ability to go there or you don't have the funds because I mean let's face it times are hard financially for all of us we're seeing the prices of things just go crazy and then James just texted me this morning and told me of uh, a business that's been in business for years they're going out of business now because I mean people just can't afford to support all these businesses with the prices and then i understand the business side of it i mean they're buying high they have to sell higher it's just it's a really hard time for our country so we're still not helpless we may not have the resources to actually go there we may not have the money to actually send there but we have something that is more powerful than all of that and that is prayer and i hate I hate such a strong word. I don't like it when people say, all I can do is pray. <sighs> like, that's not powerful. Like, that is one of the most powerful things that you can do is pray. Because when you pray, you are speaking directly to the one who has unlimited resources, who can do anything, Nothing is impossible for him. The only thing he cannot do is fail. So, I really, I, and I catch myself saying that well, all I can do is pray. But I really try to refrain from using it in that text. And instead say, you know what? I'm limited to what I can do physically, monetarily. But I can pray. And I can speak to the one who is in control. And, you know, I think sometimes... This is just my personal conviction, what I'm about to say. But when I say, all I can do is pray, I feel that that is undermining God. That that's like putting some kind of limitation on Him. That, no, God cares about all things. He cares about the little things. He cares about the big things. And even, I want to add this, even if you're going through some things in your life that are not as devastating as what we've seen and heard. But it matters to you and it's devastating to you and it's painful to you and it may seem so insignificant to others. It still matters to God. I hear sometimes people saying, I mean, does God really care about whatever? It could be something so trivial. Yes, yes, he does. And he is so almighty and so all-powerful that he can care about the little things that concern you all at the same time of taking care of such total devastation and destruction. That is us humanizing God and putting limitations on God when we say, does God really care about, I'm going to throw an example out there, does God really care about your weight uh, does God really care about your home decor? Does God really care about uh, your flowers in the garden blooming? Does God really care about that when there's all this going on? Yes. If it matters to you, it matters to him. And it doesn't matter what others say or think. I mean, I'm sure I'm dealing with some things and I go through some things. And I'm going to tell you. I go through and I talk to God about everything. And I pray about everything. And if you was to hear some of the conversations I have with God, you would probably say, Donna, why are you wasting God's time with this? With this mediocre stuff that really doesn't matter. Because it matters to me. And if it matters to me, it matters to Him. So if you're going through something and it matters to you, it matters to Him. So you pray. The Bible tells us to pray about everything. To bring forth your cause. Your just cause. Lay your reasoning out there. Give him your strong reason. That doesn't mean he's going to give you your way. and He's going to answer every little prayer you pray to him. Because he sees the grand scheme of things. But he does not disregard your feelings. And he understands you. He created you. He knows you better than you know yourself. 
And so, yes, absolutely, if it matters to you, it matters to him. And I wish I had unlimited funds that I could just help everybody that needs it. I could help all my family. My family would never have to worry about anything. You know, I wish. I don't. I wish I had resources, heavy machinery, helicopters, whatever. I wish. I don't. But I do know what I can do, and I can talk to the one who has unlimited resources, just like you can. So, don't let the world make you feel guilty. Guilt is a big a big tool the enemy will try to use. Don't let the world make you feel guilty because you don't have the funds or the ability or the time to physically go there. You can go there in prayer and you can talk to the creator. And he has unlimited time, resources, funds. He can make a way where there is no way. He can put the right people at the right time in the right spot with exactly what they need. That's how good God is. And that's what I'm doing in all of this. So, as much as I wish I had other things that I could do. I mean, I can donate clothes. I can donate stuff like that. Absolutely. And I will and do. Um, but I guess my thing is I've seen it happen where others will try to make people feel guilty. And that's just not, that's just not godlike. That's just not godlike because quite honestly, I personally don't want anybody to do anything for me out of guilt. If it's not given with a cheerful heart and because they want to, I really don't want it, you know? Um, but I always, always, always can pray and do for others. So my, my plan A is pray. And then God will either help me implement plan B by all this other stuff or he will tell me something else he wants me to do. And that's another thing with praying. God will reveal to you how you can be best used in any situation, you know. Um, he will let you know what he needs you to do. And if he tells you to do it, he will make a way and provide for you to do what he wants you to do. We can never go wrong with praying. So our plan A should always be to pray. Pray, pray, pray. And then let everything else fall into place according to the will of God. That's what I'm taking from this. You may get something different. That's the beauty of God's word. But I just want you to know that maybe reword if you word it like I have been guilty of in the past when and instead of saying all I can do is pray reword that and say I can't do much but I can pray you know what I mean and it just changes the the effects of it and it lets the devil know we are going to the one in charge we're going we're going above the boss and the manager that we're going to the one that's in control of all of it you know what I mean I hope that makes sense but I love you. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.